Good morning, everyone around the world. This is Janie Seltzer. I am the spiritual director for the Zig Ziglar family community and for everyone else who'd like to be a part of this um, gathering of faith where we encourage, pray for, and help one another, encourage one another to do this, um, <laughs> be buried in the refuge of our God. And my question for you today is, will you be like a tree? Good morning. Hi, Deborah Nelly. Thank you for listening. Hello. Hi, Vivian. Good morning. Shalom to everyone. Happy Sunday. And I know that it is not a happy day for everyone. Many of you who are listening to me may be struggling and I, hi everyone, I, I just feel so much love for you and I'm so glad to be with you. This just togetherness that we have here in this space is in itself an encouragement. I, I feel it, I hope you feel it. And we are gathered around the fire and the living water of God who will strengthen us. I know as I was getting ready to say that there are many of you around the world who do not feel great at this moment. You may feel um, a frightened. You may be in despair. Um, right now in the half of the United States is getting slammed by what they're calling a monster storm, a huge snowstorm, and s at least seven people have died. So as I speak at this very moment here in the USA, there are many people who are hunkered down, feeling um, lots of emotion, um, perhaps feeling trapped, perhaps feeling um, overwhelmed, perhaps feeling, where is God? And I understand because all of us struggle with those emotions from time to time, sometimes more, sometimes less. And <laughs> Gotta fix my hair. I'm looking at myself going, oh, Janie. <laughs> All right. So I, um, I um, want to bring to you today the same encouragement and strength that I have found for myself. I can only give you what I have received, right? And what we're doing in this new year is we're focused around the concept of the tree. Um, we've been doing the parables of Jesus, if you've been with me for a while. And by the way, if you would begin to like and share this broadcast on your Facebook page so that others can join us. Hi, Francis. The storm. Uh, let's see. The she, Francis is telling us her thoughts on the storm. Hi, Pat. Good morning in Alabama. Hey, Joseph. Good to see you. Good morning, Joseph. Blessings in Christ. He is my Savior and many of you, but if he's not, if he's not your master, you are still welcome to join us and perhaps to learn, to hear something that will resonate with your soul. I um, feel myself that if I did not have my master, Jesus, Yeshua, the very Messiah of Israel and the world in present in my soul, I don't know how I would keep going because life hits us all the time with major storms like the snowstorm going on right now in the Midwest. And frankly, snow is probably... Um, well, let's just say it's emblematic of so many other things. You may wake up hurting all over. You may wake up feeling sick and tired, and, and you're tired of being sick and tired. You may be battling um, emotional and mental issues and addictions. You may be grieving deeply because of a relationship that has broken up or a dream that has died. All of those things are part of our human experience. And 
I think the best thing I can do at the top of this hour is to bring us all into the presence of our of a holy and good and wise Father who sees you and loves you and understands you and desires to comfort you. And so I ask now, Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you would encircle this globe with your presence and you would bring comfort to those who grieve. You would bring strength to those who feel weak. You would bring hope to those who feel hopeless. You would release the prisoners. You would release the captives, those who, who long to be free and to live free lives, those who huddle in darkness and have no, have no light coming. Be their light, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, the living God. Walk among us, break through those walls, shatter those barriers, and comfort, comfort your people. I pray for your healing. I pray that you would lay your hand of blessing on those who need healing, that you would flood their bodies with all of the power, the dominus from the throne of the Father. Come, Father, come, Spirit, Come, Lord Jesus, thank you that you are Elohim, you are Yahweh, you are our God. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen. I love you in with the same love that I am loved. And I desire to encourage you, to inspire you to live this day, no matter what it brings, with as much of the strength that as God can give. And by the way, that's more than we can ask or think. That means that we can have joy deep in our inner person, even when we feel no happiness. I, um, I'll never forget when I was a very... Uh, so much younger than I am now, I went to a Bible study with a woman, and I only went once. I was living in Massachusetts at the time. My husband, Pastor Don Seltzer, was in training to be a pastor. He was getting his Master's of Divinity. I was working, I was working and going to school as well. And I went to a Bible study once, and I walked in. It was a small group of us, and the woman who led the study only said, one thing that I never forgot. She said, you know what? My sons said to me, Mama, why do you say you're a Christian and you love Jesus, but you're not happy? And she said that she looked at her sons and she said, you may not see happiness in me right now because things are hard, but there is joy deep in my soul. And I'm sorry if my face doesn't show it. And I'll never forget that. I, I, I went there that day to hear that because I understood in that moment that there can be a difference. We want our souls to inform our face, right? Um, so that's what I pray for. Um, Father God, I say, with the power of your spirit, inform my face that I have this joy deep inside, even if circumstances are not the best, even if I didn't sleep well last night or I'm exhausted from a week's worth of hard work and all of those things that we all do all the time. Um, Father, inform my face. And so I ask for all of you listening to me that you too would pray that prayer. Father, in, by the power of your spirit, by the power of your spirit, inform my face with what I have within. You see, we all have, if we ask, which is so simple, just ask Ask for God to flood you with his joy. Jesus said, these things I say to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full, abundant. So Jesus is the one who gives us joy. That's where we start. We say, Jesus, give me more of your joy. And by the way, he said, then listen deeply. Listen 
listen to my words. He said, these things I say to you so that my joy might be in you. Do you see the connection? There's a definite connection between listening to the word of God and finding joy. If you don't have a regular practice of listening, not just listening to, you know, nothingness, to the sounds of the universe, I mean, there's some value there, but it's not enough. We start there, we are still, and, and we it need more. And so, as we lean into the Word of God, it strengthens us. That happened to me this morning. Huh. Yes, it did. And you're going to hear more about that. Um, I was very tired and very weak this morning when I got up to prepare myself to meet with you. And I struggled in my weakness. And I said to the Father, in my weakness, will you be strong and will you give me a word? I need a word, Father. I know without a doubt that the reason I felt the way I felt, well, it was twofold. One was for me to remember again that this teaching that I do with you has nothing to do with me. It is all about the Spirit of God. And if I am weak, he is strong. And it is the power of God that touches your soul, that deepens your walk, that gives you more. It is not me. And so I'm reminded of that. And also, I'm reminded once again that I am a clay pot just like you. And that in our humanity, in our earthen vessels, we need his spirit. So it's okay to feel weak. If you feel weak right now, be where you are. And listen deeply as I share with you what I was nourished by, and I hope it will help you too. We are doing this study on trees for a reason. And, and by the way, I know my title last week is very close to this week. Last week is was, Will You Be a Tree? This week, I'm just adding a word in there. Will you be like a tree? Now, last week, I took you to Psalm 1, and we studied it. We looked at the, the, all of the um, implications of Psalm 1, where we were reminded to not uh, walk with the, those hostile to God, or we will become like them. To not stand in the environment of those who are selfish and independent and separated from God, or it will affect us. We are not to sit in the seat of mockers, um, those who scorn everything good and right and true. Rather, we are to be like, we're to be a tree planted by streams of water. And if you recall, I painted this picture and you see mostly roots, right? And those roots are on purpose. Um, those roots are what we are focused on, is to develop and to have such firm rooting in the, in the scripture, in the power of God, in the life of God, that we are able to be resilient through life, to live a long and green life by his power. That's really what I'm all about, as you know, nurture soul live whole. You can learn more on Jesus, on Jesus, well, yes, that too, on JanieSeltzer.com. So a friend of mine said, Janie, I loved how the, the candle was empowering the roots. And yes, you see that as well. Now, you may or may not be able to tell that there's a lot of blue in the midst of the darkness, and that is the river of life. And we're going to look a little bit more at that today. So let me go back. Will you be like a tree? Now, this picture was taken in, and I brought it to show you because it gives me joy to even recall being there. I told you last week that one of my most impactful 
experiences was walking through near woods, which is north of San Francisco, and to walk in the silence of the forest among the coastal redwoods, these ginormous, incredibly beautiful trees. And as I walked along this path alone, very few people were walking. I was there on in off tourist season, if you recall, were even walking. And suddenly I came upon this huge tree that was split open and yet still thriving. Split open and yet still thriving. Isn't that what we all need? To be able to thrive even when we are split open. I've been split open and by God's grace I have continued to stay green because of his grace, only his grace. And so I stepped in to this tree and this is the picture. Now, it just so happened that at that very moment, a couple walked by and saw me standing in the tree. And they said to me, would you like us to take your picture? I said, oh, would you please? And so they did. And that's how I have this picture. And I lost it. I couldn't find it. It took me about an hour. You know how pictures, we all have so many pictures on our phones. And I, I was, I was fran not frantic, but I was kind of frantic trying to find this picture because I thought, oh no, did I delete it? And I was so relieved when I found it. And the reason is because when I look at it, I, I find some sort of strength and breath in the memory of being there. And I would like to invite you to enter into this space with me and breathe. Let's breathe. Let's stand in a beautiful forest together. Hmm. A forest where the towering redwoods are all around us. Close your eyes if you need to. Let's walk silently through the forest. Let's enjoy the tranquility together. Let's hear the birds rustling about in the leaves. Let's listen to the quiet wind blowing through the trees. Let's observe the babies, the little shoots coming up between the parent trees. You don't see that here, but I have pictures of that too. I'll share that with you next week. Let's take it all in. Let's be with our Lord among the trees and breathe. Are you with me? Give me some thumbs up if you're with me. Come into the tree with me and let's find refuge. Psalm 46 says, thank you, thank you for the thumbs up, thank you. Psalm, Psalm 46 says, the Lord is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, hmm. though the earth should move and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. <sighs> Friends, don't be afraid. Get into the tree with me. Come on in. Let's find refuge. Let's find strength. Hmm. There is strength in the presence of God. There is a strength that the world cannot give. There is comfort. There is hope. There is eternal life because you see, in the split between the trees is a void. But that darkness 
leads to eternity. Don't be afraid of the night. He sees us, Psalm 139 says. Darkness and light are the same. We don't have to be afraid of dying. We don't have to be afraid of pain. We don't like pain, but we will live. We live because he lives, John 14 tells us. So come into the tree with me. Find strength in the presence of God. Find your smile again. Find your life in Christ. You know that the motto, the reason that my husband and I called our ministry, our current ministry, Hidden Life Ministries, is because we know that it is so important that people of faith live in Colossians 2, or rather 3, verses 1 through 3. Set your mind on things above, not on the earth, for you have died, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. There you are. Your real life is hidden with Christ in God. Find the hiddenness right now. Get into the tree with me and find the refuge and strength that will sustain you. Jeremiah 17 is our scripture for today. And it is put in the context, if you would like to take time, and I hope you will, to read the context of Jeremiah, um, Jeremiah 17 and Jeremiah in general. Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet because he was weeping and wailing for Israel. He knew that God's judgment was going to fall on them because their hearts had turned away. From their maker. And so with great pain and great sorrow, Jeremiah described to the people of Israel what it was like to turn away from God and, and what God, Adonai, Elohim, Yahweh, desired of them. And it applies to us. If we are people of faith, as I tell you time after time, we are grafted in to the tree of Israel, God's chosen people. We are all called into the tree. <laughs> yes, we are all called into the tree of faith, the tree of life. Are you connected to the tree of life? Have you chosen the tree of life? I hope and pray that you have, because if you haven't, let me show you what Jeremiah tells us about what happens. Here we go. Let me get my glasses on so I can read. This is what the Lord says. Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans who rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from the Lord. Hmm. Let's stop right there. Cursed. The word cursed means it's not like God puts a curse on us. We are in a position if we have turned our hearts away from God we have put ourselves in a position of despair and misfortune. We are cursed because we have turned, we've put all of our trust and confidence. I want you to notice, put their trust in mere humans who rely on human strength. Hmm. So if we 
trust in human beings to rescue us? Wives, if you expect your husband to be your God, you're going to be disappointed. You're going to put yourself in a place of misfortune. They can never be God. They're never supposed to be. Husbands, if you're looking for something for your wife to meet all of your needs, you're putting your trust in the wrong place. Or if you're expecting a friend to be all things to you at all times, it's never going to work, or a counselor, or a substance, anything on this planet. If we're trusting things or people to meet all of our deepest needs, we are putting ourselves in a place that is cursed. By the way, um, my husband... Pastor Don loves movies and he finds them in libraries and in, um, you know, um, bins and Walmart for cheap prices. And he happened upon a, a movie about the life of John Paul, of Getty, you know, the, the, the great, the, well, actually he is great because People know who he is, right? Uh, the art collector who was at one time literally the richest man on the planet. And the story was a true story. It was about his grandson who was kidnapped and Getty was asked to pay $16 million. This was back in 1973. Um, to pay sixteen million dollars to his to as a ransom for his grandson, which, by the way, he refused to pay. It, it's a it's a great a movie. Um, all I want to say at this point, and he, Getty did finally come through with a little bit at the end, um, after his grandson's ear had been chopped off. Horrible, horrible, true story. Um, yeah, tragic, very sad. Here is the richest man on the planet, and he cannot, he cares more about his art than he does about his own flesh and blood. He does not um, have any love, not the kind of love, not agape love, not love that gives. He had no love that he would be willing to protect and ransom his grandson. He said the words, I love my grandson, but love is as love does. There's a great book that's on the market right now simply called Love Does. The author is down here in San Diego near me. Love does. It doesn't matter what we say. It's what do we do. And Getty would not do what he said he would do. He, in, in, in the sense of he did not, he didn't match his words with his actions. Actually, in the beginning, from the very beginning, he said, I'm not going to pay $16 million. Now, he's a billionaire. He's the wealthiest man on the planet. $16 million was a drop in the bucket for Getty. This man lived the life that is going that I'm going to continue to show you that Jeremiah talked about. Look at this, my friends. We start from the top. This is what the Lord says. Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans, who rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from the Lord. They are stunted shrubs in the desert with no hope for the future. They will live in the barren wilderness, in an uninhabited, salty land. Jeremiah 17, verses 5 through 6. This verse describes Getty. He and everyone like him who puts their trust in what humans make or in humans themselves or in their own strength will be filled with misfortune. And by the way, Getty died a miserable, 
unhappy human being. And he died before he saw his grandson alive again. The grandson did live thanks to his mother. But cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans, who rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from the Lord. They will be like a shrub in the wilderness. They will live in an uninhabited, salty land. So friends, we have a choice. We can keep our hearts turned towards Yeshua, towards Abba Father, towards the Spirit of God, or we can keep our hearts on this planet and on people and on things. And if we make that choice, we are choosing to live like a shrub in the wilderness. Is that really where you want to be? Hmm. How's that working out for you, being out there in the uninhabited land, the salty land? Is that really where you want to be? It's not where I want to be. I know that for sure. I know that it, uh, that is a miserable place and a miserable way to live. And when my heart turns even a little bit away from my Lord, it's, it, it gets salty and barren very fast very fast, and I turn myself back towards the Lord, and I say to him, no, 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 I'm not going to trust in this planet. I'm not going to trust in myself. I'm not going to trust in my own strength. No, 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 no. It is not about me. It is you. It is all you. You are my refuge and my strength, my very present help in trouble. Help, Lord, help. And that is the position that we want to be in. It's, you say, well, that's just like a poor, oh, you know, poor little soul that is just weak. No, actually, no. Um, because when we turn our hearts towards the Lord, something miraculous happens. And I'll show you what it is. Here is how Jeremiah followed up. He said, how blessed are are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along the riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. Yes, sir, Bob, is that where you want to be? That's where I want to be every single day, every moment of every day. I want to be that tree planted, and I am. I have planted myself firmly by the living water, and, and it is where I remain. You know, the disciples, um, they were very worried when literally droves of people turned away from Yeshua when he began to teach deeper and harder things like unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood you'll have no part in me remember when he said that and people went oh what's this cannibalism get out of here and away they went this man's crazy well, he wasn't crazy at all. He was referring to what was coming. He was referring to the importance of communion, of the Eucharist. He was referring to his broken body and poured out blood on our behalf. And that's what he was talking about. And yes, did everyone understand that when he was saying it? No. Is there, are there a lot of things in scripture we don't understand or even like or agree with? Yes, but... Are we going to be like the disciples when all these people r walked away or ran away saying he's a crazy man, he's a crazy man, he's a crazy man. Yeshua turned to his disciples, his Talmud, Talmudim, I think that's how you pronounce it in Hebrew. And he said to them, will you also leave? Hmm. My friends, will you leave? My answer echoes the disciples. They said, well, where would we go? For you speak words of eternal life. Friends, that's exactly how I feel.
That's how I felt for many, many years. Well, where would I go? You speak the words of eternal life. And friends, when I speak to you and I tell you and I repeat to you the, the living word of God, you may not like it all, you may not get it all, but there's something that resonates in you that says, this is life. This is true. I don't get it. I may not like it, but it's true. And where else am I going to turn? I hunger and thirst for truth. Are you with me? Give me some love and give me some thumbs up. If you're with me, you are, you are that person too. You are planted firmly. You will not get up. You will not drag your roots out of the water because the water nourishes you. The water feeds you. The water is your life. And it is my life. Yes, I see those thumbs up. Yes, I, I know. Hi, Jim. Good to see you. Thank you. Oh, well, you are so welcome. Uh, it is life. Keep your roots in deep. And, and this is a good time for me to tell you what I discovered this morning that was a huge aha to me. As, and I'm going to do something I've never done before. It may not work. Bear with me. I'm going to try. I am a learner. And in that position of learning, um, I get excited uh, because I may, not, I may not be able to pronounce everything just right. I may not be able to draw everything just right. But you know what? I get the gist of it. I get the core. And I got something this morning that so blessed me and helped me. First of all, I saw as I studied the word of God that the key word was trust. Hmm. T-R-U-S-T. The key word was trust. Now, this has been my word since... I was, let's see, I was probably about 30 years old when I, when that word got delivered to me. I'm not going to go into that story, but the word was seared on my forehead. Trust me. Now, I, I, I have, I've heard it echoing th for, for years and years and years. Trust me, Janie, trust me. And so the word's not new to me, and it's not new to you. But what I discovered this morning as I was looking at that word, as I saw the difference between the person who is trusting in what is human and those who are trusting in God. And I, I looked at that and I said, Oh, over here, there's trust, trust, trust in human things and human beings and human strength. But over here is trust, trust, trust in the Lord, delighting and trusting in him. And I've decided I would look the word up in Hebrew. I never did that before. What does this word mean in Hebrew? And as you know, I'm learning Hebrew. I am a novice, but I understand symbols. And I understand that the Hebrew language is so highly symbolic. It is the most powerful language on this planet because it is so symbolic. And once again, this point was, draw was brought home to my soul when I saw what the word means in Hebrew. So I'm going to do something. I'm going to lift up this chalkboard. And let me see here, how are we gonna do this? Um, you know what, I don't care how I look, I care, there we go. Okay, uh, everything's a little blurry, but we're going to do this. Now, I'm going to draw for you what the word trust means in Hebrew. I'm going to look at my notes because I don't want to get it wrong. Okay, so here we go. This is the first letter in Hebrew. And um, I... I drew that wrong, so hold on a minute. I made the shape wrong. Here we go. Okay, that is B in Hebrew, okay? And Rebecca, our Hebrew teacher, likes to say to us, think of a boy 
in a house. Think of a boy in a house. So, so, or a girl in a house. Okay. So that's what, that's what it is. It's, it's, that's the first letter and it's B. The second letter is like this. And that is a T in Hebrew. And I know this is backwards. I understand. Just bear with me because I think it's going to be worth it. And I think you're going to enjoy it. This is, think of like someone who's topped with something. It's a tea, like a teapot. Um, it's like the top of the teapot, okay? So we've got a B, we've got a T, and there's only one more letter. And I know you're probably glad, but watch this, stay with me. Oops, I went up too high, didn't I? Okay, stay with me, I'm gonna show you this last letter. Okay, there it is. <laughs> it's pronounced, <laughs> you know, you, you, know, you kind of roll the back of your throat. <laughs> Okay, and it looks like a fence, doesn't it? Yes, and it, in, in the um, Hebrew, it's kind of a, like this. <laughs> That's a C and an H. So we have a boy in a house topped with a fence. Okay, now watch this. So this word is pronounced bach, bach, tak. Batach. I know it's backwards. Batach. Batach. Okay. Batach is trust in Hebrew. Now, when I was studying this, there's a boy in the house. He's topped with a fence. Ah, there's a girl in the house. She's topped with a fence. Okay. So let's do something. There's a boy. I'm going to redo this. There's a boy or a girl in a house topped with a fence. You see that? I stacked them. We're in our house. We're in the house of our soul. We're topped with something. I put, made that into a heart. Shouldn't be. It's a tea, like a teapot. Okay? And then we're fenced in. We're fenced in. So, whatever you're topped with, whatever you trust, and you remain resolute there, you're fenced in. You're in, you're topped with something, and you're fenced in. You're not moving. You're immovable. Are you with me? Tell me if you're with me. I know. Please don't leave. I'm, this, this will help you. Because what I want you to do is to realize that whatever you're topped with, whatever is your, your Archimedean point, your, your place, your resource, your strength, are you with me? Whatever is your strength, and you're, you're, in the, you're fenced in with this, you're resolute. If your heart is with Christ, then you're fenced in and topped, topped with him. He is your head. He is what you live for. And you're fenced in because you want to be fenced in. You want to stay right there. You want to be resolute and strong in Christ. That is what trust means. I am topped, crowned with him. I am fenced in with him. I remain with him. I live by trust. And those are the words that were seared to my forehead when I was 30 years old a long time ago. You are topped by me and I will keep you safe. I will fence you in with my power and my love. I will fence you in with agape and with dominus. You are topped by me. Now, for those who are topped by this world and by human strength and by human device and by, by putting their trust in everything that this planet is, they are also trusting, but they're trusting in the desert. Do you follow me? We, either way, it's trust. Either way, there's faith involved. Those who say that atheism, that there is no God, wrong. An atheist puts their trust that there is no God. That's their faith. So everybody has faith. 
You either have faith in the one true God, the one true living God, or you have faith that there is no God and you're, you're living for yourself and by your own strength and you are God. Wrong. I'm sorry. You're going to end up just like Getty in a desert land with lots of salt and no joy and uninhabited, alone, desolate, dying with an art piece in his hand because that's all he had to hold on to. What a tragic story. What a sad man. What an unloving person. And that's what we will be if we're topped by this world instead of Christ. So my friends, that's my little Hebrew lesson. Ha, kind of funny, maybe. But I did the best I could to share with you what gave me joy. He showed me, Janie, I top you. You may not have all the wisdom or all the strength. You may not be able to give and say all the things properly that you want to do and say. You may not be eloquent. You may not be whatever. It doesn't matter. I am your life and your strength and your words and your wisdom. And it is true for all of you listening to me. Do not put your trust in yourself. Put your trust in Christ. Put your life in him. Don't look to other people to meet the needs that only Christ can meet. Love them. Do all that you can to build bridges with them. Don't isolate. We're to be living in community with each other so that we can grow and learn. But also know that it is God who is your refuge and strength. It is God who fuels you with love and power and self-control. My friends, it is God who gives us rest. And that's what I needed this morning. More than anything was rest. And he gave me rest as I sat with him. And I'm looking for something that I can share with you as I close. And let me see if I can find it. Because I, the tree that is planted by streams of water, well, guess what? I must have lost... Oh, there it is. I found it. Yay. Like I said, it's not about me. Okay, here we go, friends. Here we are. Rest in Christ, which is true Sabbath. Rest in Christ. That's what he said to me. Rest, Janie. Rest. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Rest. Rest. I have everything you need. Be a tree. Be like a tree, just sit by the stream. I'll feed your roots, rest, Sabbath. I'm gonna share with you what that means to me. Rest in Christ, which is listen. So first we breathe, and then we listen. And that's exactly what I did. First I just rested, and then I listened. We can't really listen unless we rest. Hmm. We have to be calm. We have to get in that tree and breathe. And then we can hear the word of God. And that's what I did. And I heard the word trust. And then I explored the word. And I found out that it's what you're topped with, what you're fenced in with, what your life is all about. And then I was encouraged. And I knew that he is everything. Rest in Christ. Face to glory. <laughs> yeah. So let me show you where that came from. Rest. Face to glory. Face to glory. The reason I said face to glory. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, have made the Lord their hope and their confidence. They are like trees planted along the river bank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat, nor worried by long months of drought. How long? Long months. You may feel like you're just about to die. The drought's been going on for so long. Mm -mm. You're not gonna die. Your roots are still getting nourishment. The leaves stay green. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. 
you know, um, the reason I said keep your face to the glory is because, again, this word trust, when I read the word and understood more deeply the word, what it did was it turned my eyes to his glory. I was turned to his glory. And in turning to his glory, I knew that my leaves were in now speak to you with the freshness of the life of Christ. Let me close by showing you what Sabbath means to me. Um, wrote this poem years ago. It's called Sabbath Rest, and I decided to put it beside the tree because even though it talks about a nest, that tree was like a nest to me that when I got in it. And as I think about it, it feels like a nest. Let's get back in that tree and let's nest and let's, let's just breathe a little bit. I hope this poem helps you breathe. Sabbath rest is a nest where you hide me. Tranquility of soul fills the hole of loneliness and depression. I learn to be still, burrow deeper, eager to hear the rustle of your spirit. I find you there, and you find me. I hear the sounds of life pumping, warm swells soothing my damaged wings. So, I, I, Sabbath rest for me means getting into that tree like a little bird, like I'm in a nest. It's getting into the presence of God like a little bird whose wings are wounded, um, who feels like the bird can't fly. It's lost its wind. And just being with him until I feel the sounds of life pumping through my body and the woundedness beginning to be healed. And that's what I pray for each of you, that in your woundedness right now, wherever you are, whatever you feel, that you would know that there is life pumping through your roots. And I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that your roots would be flooded with the living water. There is a river that makes there is a there is a river that makes <laughs> I forgot that verse that gives joy to the city of God. That's it. Be the city of God. Let the joy flow. Let the joy come. Let the joy jump in your soul and flood you and heal you and tenderly hold you as a mother bird holds its baby. May you be held by the everlasting arms of loving Abba, Father. By the power of the Spirit, may he hold you and heal you and comfort you. And may he top you with his own presence forever and ever. For as we call upon the name of the Lord, we will be saved. I pray for all of you who want that and may not have that. Just ask, just ask. Ask and keep on asking and it shall be given. Ask like this, Holy Father, forgive me for not understanding that you are the river of life. Forgive me for dwelling in the desert. Forgive me for turning away from you, for turning my heart away. Forgive me right now, right here. I ask for forgiveness, and I ask that you would lift me out of my despair and out of my salty land and plant me firmly by the river of life and grow me and deepen my roots because you are good 
and you are God, and you are wise, and you know how to do this. You are our living God, and you never, ever leave us or forsake us. You hear our cry from far away. My friends, if you are in the desert and you are crying out now to be transplanted, know that you're heard. The angels in heaven rejoice. They clap their hands. They shout for joy. They come with Jesus and they uproot you and plant you tenderly in rich soil of his love, the unconditional love of Abba Father. You will be topped forever because what he begins, he completes. And so now I will close. Thank you for being with me, and thank you for being willing to let the seed of life be sown into your heart so that you will not be closed, you will not be captured, you will not be cluttered, you will have a composed mind because the seed of life has entered into your heart. I give him all the glory, my Savior. He is the lover of my soul and yours. To God be the glory, great things he does. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling away and who will bring us with great joy into his glorious presence. <laughs> All glory to him who alone is God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord. All glory power, authority, and dominion belong to him who is before all time, is in the present, and is forevermore. To God be the glory. My friends, like and share this so that others can join this ragamuffin place community of faith where we gather together and listen and are still so that God can bring us into his glory. Until next week, goodbye.